All right, so let's now formulate the first part for the refinement and proof obligation, which is about guard strengthening. So this will be the sequence over here, right? Let's now talk about the components very quickly, just to remind you, and then we'll see how we can apply this to our concrete model. Right. So over here, and this part here is simply just an axiom. And what about the distinction between I and J? Right. You can see one is using uh, one is using the abstract variables only. The other one is using not just the abstract, but also possible the concrete. Right. So one is abstract invariance. The other one is concrete invariance. This one over here is the abstract invariance, and this part over here is the concrete invariance. And what about the difference between H and G, right? Is this the abstract guard or concrete guard? Well, of course, you don't really memorize the alphabet. Think about what we are trying to do over here, right? Remember the diagram over here we said before? We actually want to make sure if the concrete states allows the concrete transition to take place, then implies the corresponding abstract state must allow the abstract counterpart to be enabled as well, right? So that means we want to make sure the guard for the concrete events must be stronger than the uh, guard for the uh, abstract events. That's that's really what we meant. Just always remember what we are tra trying to formulate over here. Right, so what we got is we got uh, this part over here. The abstract guard should be entailed eventually, right? So this part over here is really the abstract guard using only the abstract variable. So this is the abstract guard. And this part over here is the concrete guard. And by the way, the concrete guard of what? So here we got ML in, we got ML out. We got two possible concrete guards. Which concrete guard are we talking about? So it depends on which event you're trying to formulate its guard strength in, strengthening rule. That's something we'll talk about as well. Because we do have a question over here for you about how many proof obligation rules should we really generate for M1. I'll speak about it in just a moment. Okay. And so that's about the different components for the sequence. So let's now talk about what well, let's now come back to this question here. How many sequence do we need for this uh, scar strengthening uh, proof obligation? The, uh, the idea would be we have to make sure for every concrete guards for the events, we want to make sure, for example, let's say for MLN over here, its corresponding abstract uh, events will be MLN over here. We want to make sure its concrete guard can really imply the abstract guard. However, the proof of ob obligations say something more detailed over here. They use the index over here for the uh, abstract guard. So that means we want to prove the guard individually rather than all at one go. So in some way, that's very good for uh, compositional proof. But anyway, so we want to do one by one. In our case, for the abstract model, we got only one abstract guard and also one abstract guard for each event. So in some way, it's easier for us. But just know that in general, if you got more than one guards for the abstract events, in that case, each one of them should be proved separately. Right? That's something I want you to keep in mind. Okay, so let me just write it down about the formula over here. You can also see that in the slides. So how many rules do we need in total? Since our goal is really to make sure the abstract art, each of the abstract art is actually entailed by the corresponding concrete guards in the concrete state space for the concrete events. So the number of sequence we will need for the guard strengthening will be only depends on how many abstract guard we actually have. So you don't need to multiply by any uh, number of events. Right, let me write it down. So just about the number of abstract guard conditions or just abstract guard. So all you do is you simply count how many abstract guard you have. In our case, we have for ML out, we only got one abstract guard condition. But of course, in general, for your abstract events, you may have multiple guarding conditions, in which case the number of sequence generated accordingly will increase. And this will be another one. So we only got two. So in this case, we only got two. In our uh, at bridge controller first refinement model. And how do we generate it? I'm going to do this one here and the, the other one 
should be left as an exercise for you. And of course, I highly suggest you actually pause the video once I'm done with the first uh, the first one, try to do it in a very similar way before you move on. I think that'll be the best to get yourself prepared for uh, maybe formulating it maybe later in the assessment, okay? Let's now talk about it, right? So we're going to just go one by one. The first one will be the axiom A over here. However, I didn't really include it in my abstract model or the concrete model. Let me just remind you what the axioms are. We got two axioms, actually. So this is the only constant that both models have. And these are the two axioms. Right? You can see D is a natural number and D is strictly positive. Right? Let me now put it back. Okay, let me go back here. And I will simply put. So that will be D is a natural number and also d is strictly larger than zero that's the axiom and let's talk about the second one the second one will be the abstract invariance the abstract invariance let me use maybe green okay the abstract invariant over here and the abstract invariance actually comes from the abstract model so these are the abstract invariants over here right so we got invariant one invariant two so we got n is a natural number and also n is less than or equal to d right so let me just uh, give you a little bit comments over here so you can think about this one here is actually invariant 0 1 and also invariant 0 2 and the previous two is the axiom so axiom 0 1 and also axiom 0 2 right so these two uh, these are not part of the uh, sequence, of course. I'm putting them just as a comment, right? Just for you to to uh, actually trace back to uh, where the hypotheses are in the model. The next one will be the concrete invariance over here, right? The J, which will involve both the abstract and concrete variables. And again, the concrete invariance do not necessarily have to involve the abstract variables as we said before, but at least it should involve the uh, concrete variables. And these are all the concrete invariants we have over here, right? And let's write it down. So we got A is a natural number, and also B is a natural number. And I think I might just move the formula over here away, okay? Otherwise, I wouldn't have enough space, would I? Okay, let me just put it over here, right? The formula. Right, so this one here is really the formula. Just make sure it's pointing to the right direction. All right, let's con now continue. Okay, so uh, the abstract variant, uh, the concrete variance. So, so this is invariance one, one, invariance one two, invariance one three, invariance one four and also invariance one five right and we got c is a natural number and invariant one four a plus b plus c equals n a plus b plus c equals n and also one-way breach constraint a equals zero or c equals zero the final thing we have is about the con uh, the uh, abstract guard sorry concrete guard right we want to make sure the concrete guard, the guard for the concrete states is actually enabled, in which case we can take the concrete transition. And we want to make sure correspondingly, the uh, abstract guard should be enabled as well. But we're gonna do the abstract guard one by one. In our case, we only got one abstract guard. And which, ev uh, which events are we talking about? So far, I don't, uh, so far you can think about this part over here will be exactly event independence, right? Let me also write it down. So far, what we have spoken about, about this part over here, right? Everything except for G and H. This part over here is really event independence. Events independence. On the other hand, the H and also G over here. So these two depends on which events that we have under consideration. Depends on the events under consideration. Under consideration. Right? Which event should we do? Let's say we do ML out. All right. Let's say we want to consider ML out. And the naming convention would be we simply put ML out. 
over here, and then forward slash and GRD. Basically corresponding to the rule of the proof obligation, which is about the guard strengthening. Okay. And what with the concrete guard? So for the concrete guard, let me use maybe rat to represent it, right? So concrete guard is going to be for MLN. Oh, for ML, sorry. ML is over here, right? Its concrete guard will be over here, right? So it would be A plus B less than D and also C equals zero, right? So this part over here is really the concrete guards of ML out. Concrete guards of ML out. Okay, I just have enough space for all the hypotheses. ML out over here, right? So, so far you can see we got two uh, parts for the uh, hypothesis. And this part over here is just about axia invariance. And this part over here, the second part that we put, right? I was hoping that I can just have enough space over here. Give me a moment just to put it. Okay, that's the first part. And this is the second part. Oh, actually, let me just box this way over here. I want to keep it as organized as possible for you. Right? So when you look at the notes, it will make sense. Right? So these are the two parts. And so far, we only have listed the hypothesis. And once we got a hypothesis, we can say turn style. Turn style. And what will be the goal? The goal will be uh, the individual guarding constraint for the abstract guard, right? So the abstract guard over here, so index I. And for ML out, we only got one abstract guarding condition, only one. So we have no choice but just to have N less than D. In case we actually got several abstract guarding condition for ML out, for example, in that case, you will need to have several sequence. Of course, this part over here will be exactly the same, but the individual guarding constraint at the abstract uh, states will actually generate, uh, well, will actually need to be individually generated for a separate sequence. But for now, we only got one, right? So that's really important for you to keep in mind. Let's now do the abstract art. And for the abstract art, again, let me use green, okay? Maybe a slightly different green color. So how about this one here, right? It's a bit light green, okay? So this will be the uh, abstract art, in which case, N less than D. So that'll be N less than Right, so that's the uh, secret that we have to prove. Looks very impressive, doesn't it? But we'll see exactly how to prove it. Right. So so far, let's may, let me recap what we uh, what we have done. We have formulated the sequence based uh, for the uh, for guard strengthening based on this rule over here, and the events that we are doing the guard strengthening is the ML out over here. So that's why we have to somehow put in the axiom abstract invariant, concrete invariance, and also concrete guards for ML out. And then everything here should entail the abstract guard for the uh, counterpart, uh, for the abstract counterpart for the ML out, which will be N less than D, right? That's what we have. So that'll be the answer for uh, the guarding constraint, like a guard, uh, sorry, guard strengthening proof obligation for ML out. And the exercise will be for you to formulate the guarding constraint for MLN. Right, so that'll be the exercise for you, which is quite critical. So let me put it here, exercise. Yeah, I would suggest not to really look ahead in the slides until you're done with this exercise because solution is in the later slides. Formulates ML in instead. ML underscore in. GRD, right? So that would be my assigned exercise for you. Pretty simple, but you just have to know which part should be changed and which part should remain the same. Before I go back, I would like to do just one more annotation just to be complete. And so this part here, the goal of the hypothesis over here, let me do the annotation. This one corresponds to the abstract guard for ML out. E abstract guard of ML out. And of course, it's only a single guarding constraint. So the index over here is very important. It's only a single one, right? A single condition. 
Right, let's go back. And everything has been talked about. And just remember the formula here. So if the number of abstract R will actually change for any abstract events, the number of sequence generated for the guard strengthening proof obligation will definitely change as well. Just remember that. And so this is a sequence that we de derived together. And please do the exercise before you move on to the next part. And starting from the next part, we'll try to discharge, we'll try to prove the two sequence related to the uh, guard strengthening proof obligation.